Laser and lubrication film thickness in rolling element bearings. Four case studies. Typically, there are two options of maintenance concerning rolling element bearings. One is to re-lubricate them, and the other is to change them. Monitoring rolling element bearing and lubrication condition is paramount to ensure reliability. The bearing and the machine are an asset that must be managed, and prolonging their life will provide more contribution to the bottom line profit. Preventing collateral damage caused by bearing failure is true cost avoidance. There are several ways to monitor and measure bearing condition. Ultrasonic, temperature, vibration analysis, and shock bolts, just to mention a few. Because lubrication is the first line of defense for prolonging bearing life, it is imperative that the lubrication film thickness between the rolling elements and the raceways be measured, monitored, and maintained. Approaching predictive maintenance condition monitoring with a frontline approach with consideration of the manpower and expertise issues we are faced with today, a simple to use and accurate method of technology is a necessity. The following case studies will discuss a very simple method of monitoring bearing and lubrication condition with little investment in equipment, training, and manpower with a huge result in machine asset management. While vibration analysis is a necessity for in-depth machine condition analysis, utilizing the various other forms of vibration monitoring can prove to be profitable when considering time, manpower, and expertise within a plant. Case number one. This is a large circuit board manufacturer in California. The application is a scrubber for cleaning contaminated water before dumping it into the wastewater system. The application consisted of four three-quarter horsepower motors with an integral C-face mounted impeller pumps. All the units were running at the same time. After demonstrating how to monitor bearing condition and measure lubrication film thickness at this plant, we were asked to look at a small water scrubber. The screaming sound of a bad bearing could be heard, but they could not pinpoint which bearing was making the noise. After a quick check, the bearing was identified and its condition was determined. This was just a small 6204 sealed ball bearing, and of course the cost is less than $20. During the night, the bearing froze up and tripped the motor, so only three motors were now running. They lost a fourth of their capacity to process the water through the system. The next day, before the repair could be made, the Bay Area EPA inspector showed up, and of course, you guessed it, the fine was $32,000. The sad part is that they knew which bearing was bad, and they knew it in advance. It was, it was a sealed bearing, and no lubrication could be added. Upon inspection and after disassembly, it was found that the bearing was dry and contaminated. If predictive maintenance and condition monitoring was a part of their normal operating procedure, this downtime and fine would have never happened. Case number two. This is a food processing plant, and the application, a 700 horsepower ABB electric motor for driving a fan for dehydrating milk. ABB motors have long recommended the use of shock bolts to measure their motor bearings. Many ABB motors are equipped at the factory with SPM adapters for quick connect measurements. In this case, a new ABB motor was installed and it failed within the warranty period. The bearing froze up and twisted the shaft. There was no lubrication in the bearing. After careful review, the records showed that the maintenance personnel in the plant had indeed greased the bearing according to the recommended schedule. The seal cap was removed from the end bell of the drive in, exposing the bearing for inspection. It was found that a machining error was made during manufacture and the grease pathway from the grease circuit to the bearing lubrication notch did not line up. Grease could not get into the bearing. Even though the lubrication schedule was being adhered to, the bearing was not being measured, so no one could tell if lubrication was actually getting into the bearing. Production was interrupted, so a new motor was taken from the electric motor shop's inventory to replace the damaged motor. Before installing the new motor, a test run was performed. While the motor was running, a measurement was taken while lubrication was applied to the grease surface. Without disassembling the motor or causing an, an intrusive action, it was determined that the grease pathway was in the correct place and lubricant was truly getting into the bearing. The bearing's true condition was determined and the lubrication film thickness was measured and recorded without setting the baseline or trending. ABB honored the warranty, the damaged motor was repaired and stored for a spare, and the new motor is still running today. 
In fact, an online monitoring system, an MG4 unit, now continues to monitor these ABB electric motors. Case study number three. This is a filter fiber manufacturer, and the application consists of a 125 horsepower motor on a belt-driven exhaust fan. One of the most common bearing installation faults that affect lubrication film thickness is the installation and setup of a tapered bore double wall spherical roller bearing using a split tapered adapter in a mounted unit. The tapered adapter is used as a wedge device to hold the inner race of the bearing onto the shaft. All bearing manufacturers have recommended clearances for applying this type of bearing. This type of bearing in a pillow block housing is very common on large fan applications. If the tapered sleeve adapter is drawn up too far by over-tightening the spanner nut, which is a very common practice, the internal clearance of the bearing will be removed, thus preloading the bearing and reducing the lubrication film thickness. Even though these bearings are running with no apparent fault or vibration alarm, the reliability and the life of the machine has been put into jeopardy because the operator cannot see the film thickness problem. Lubrication film thickness can be measured to determine the true condition of the bearing during startup without setting the baseline and trending. Differentiating between bearing surface damage faults and lubrication film thickness faults is powerful knowledge. From the readings indicated on this slide, you can see that by vibration analysis utilizing ISO 2372 overall vibration standards and in inches per second RMS, there was no real fault. There was also spectrum analysis taken on this band, and again, no fault was indicated. But utilizing the shock pulse method, one bearing showed up in the red and one showed up in the yellow condition with indicators by DBM and DBC that the film thickness was too thin. Case number four. This is a small lumber company and the application is a 25 horsepower motor driving an edger in a sawmill. Standard foot mounted motors that are mounted in the vertical position must have special consideration related to lubrication. The normally mounted bearing in a horizontal motor is supporting load, overhung load, in the radial direction. If the motor is mounted in the vertical position, the bearing will see more thrust loads and the lubrication will run out through the opening of an open or shielded bearing. A sealed bearing will hold the lubricant reservoir in the lower half of the bearing because the bearing is lying on the side in this application. This position will also force all of the balls of the ball bearing to one side of the raceway, thus placing them all in more loaded situation, both radial and thrust directions. Load affects the lubrication film thickness. Normally, a motor mounted in this position will need lubricating more often than what is recommended. Another example that is very prevalent with vertical mounted motors is cooling towers. In summary, the ability to measure the lubrication film thickness is paramount. Better asset management and machine reliability can be obtained by measuring the film thickness as soon as the machine is turned on. This will prolong bearing and machine life. Lubrication film thickness in rolling element bearings is critical. It can be measured to detect and troubleshoot for proper lubrication amounts, whether it be over or under, the right kind of lubricant for the right job, to detect installation faults, and even to pinpoint the lack of film thickness if there is a compatibility and or contamination problem. Knowing the film thickness of lubrication in rolling element bearings, even in sealed bearings, is information worth measuring. Lubricant should only be applied to rolling element bearings because of demand requirements. Measuring the bearing film thickness before you lubricate will ensure that there is truly a lubrication requirement. Automatic lubrication supply systems can provide the optimum amount of lubrication at just the right time when signaled by an online measuring system. Knowing the lubrication film thickness in rolling element bearings is instrumental in best asset management practices. Knowing what really matters in rolling element bearings to ensure machine reliability is knowing the lubrication film thickness. And of course, it also pays.